Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 7, Advanced Modeling Tools, Part 2. This video is supplemented with the given PowerPoint for the class. In this video, you will learn new techniques in order to create more complex parts. We're going to start with pattern features. In order to show you how it works, we're going to open uh, part 1 of lecture 7. Pattern feature is very similar to pattern curve that we use in previous uh, lectures. The difference is now that we pattern a feature. A feature is for example an extrusion, a hole, a revolution, a chamfer, or a blend, or any other um, features that we have learned in previous lectures. So what we like to do is we like to extrude this cylinder at different directions. So we're going to start with a linear pattern. So we're going to select the feature, so in this case it's the extrusion, and we're going to specify the vector. Notice that it's given us in the other direction, we're going to switch it so that it looks into this direction. We're going to do a count of 5 and a distance of 20, and we're going to double check that they fit and then we're going to say OK. So notice that we have all the parts in here. If we want to now add it in two directions, we simply double click on the pattern and then we add the second direction and then let's put a little bit more of, uh, let's do only uh, two count in the this and a distance, let's see, of 25. So notice that we have a uh, pattern uh, linearly done. The good thing about having a pattern is that if you change the feature, notice how, for example, if we make it a little bit taller, all the children that belong to that uh, parent will change according to it. So now let's see all the things that you could modify in the pattern. You could modify the distance so that it's not constant as we have it, and we could also modify the size of it. To do that, simply double click on the pattern feature, um, click on the arrow to give you the more choices, and click on pattern increment. Notice for the pattern increment, it's going to give you those choices. Click here. And you got two available choices at this moment to change the dimensions in the pattern and to change the dimensions of the extrusions. The pattern in this moment for the direction is simply set at 20 and the other well, for section second direction is set up at 25. So we're going to do it for section 1 since it has the most amount of uh, instances. So we go over here, notice that the increment is set up to be 0. So we could do it uh, every 5. So notice when we redo it and we look at it from the top view, this is what we see. The distance at the beginning was set up to 20, then it goes 25, 30, and 35, increasing every time by 5. So now let's go back to the original view and double click to change the size of this. So we go back to pattern increment once again, double click over here, and now what we're going to change is the extrusion. So notice that it starts at 0, and the end limit is 50, so that's the highest that he has. So we double click here, and we start click on the end limit. We're going to add a, uh, for, we're going to do for the first dimension again. We're going to click a new set for the end limit, and the end limit we're going to set it up once again to be every five. And we're going to click, so notice what is going to happen. We'll look at from the front view. Every single time is going to start 50, 55, now it's going to be 60, 65, and 70. So this is a very interesting way of changing the linear patterns um, in your features. So now we're going to go over how to do a uh, radial pattern or circular pattern. So we're going to open the second part. And in this case, we have a feature, and notice that what we have is simply another extrusion. We're going to go into Pattern Features. We're going to extrude 
that particular so notice that as I do this it does meet the selection either of the sketch of the extrusion so I'm gonna select the actual extrusion I'm going to rotate it I'm going to do it circular about on a specific vector and the vector that I'm gonna use is gonna be this and the point I'm gonna choose to be the uh, center of that circle so once again notice that I have a certain amount of items and a distance in between I would like to go all around so I'm gonna do an angle of 360 and then I'm going to do let's see 20 different instances for my pattern For this type of pattern, we could also do changes in terms of increment of size and distance as we did for the linear cases. So please try it on your own. One interesting feature that we have for radial patterns or circular patterns is that we could change the orientation. Notice that in the way that we have it right now, the extrusion rotates as it rotates, as it goes around the circle. However, you could have it so that the orientation instead of following the pattern you have it the same as the input and notice if we do that then this is going to be your final result another interesting uh, component of the circular pattern is that you could create concentrical patterns for example we want to pattern this as we had it originally we want to create concentric members. Notice that at this moment the, the direction for it is going outwards. We don't have that much space over here, so we're going to go inwards. We're just going to go into a negative vector. So I'm going to put a distance of 30 and a count of 2. And then notice that if we do this, hit OK, this is the final shape that we're able to get that are concentric. And then you could put as many as you have, as long as the space that you have is sufficient. The next pattern that we're going to explore is the one through a polygon. So for that, we're going to deactivate the one that we just created. And we're going to suppress it. We're going to go back to an isometric view. And then we're going to go into pattern feature. We're going to select the feature. Once again, we're going to select the extrusion not the sketch and we're going to specify a polygon so for the polygon you need to have a center for the polygon and a point so we can just use the origin then you have to choose the number of sides so we could go let's see for three sides and how many items you want per side of the polygon so let's see I want five in each one of them and then whether you want to go around the whole circle or only a section of it and then I'm gonna just choose um, three uh, the whole circle and then I'm gonna go into apply so notice that it gives you that information in the same way that we did with circular patterns you could change the orientation so that it goes with the pattern or stays as the original you could also create concentric members so that it goes inwards or outwards about the center axis that you selected and you could also change the size and the location as we did for the linear cases the next pattern that we're going to learn is how to do it about on a spiral for that we're going to open uh, part 3 of lecture 7 so we're going to pattern this hole in the center in a spiral way. So we're going to go to pattern feature. We're going to select the uh, feature. So now notice that we could select it directly from here or we could select it from the pattern navigator. So I'm just going to select it from here and then I'm going to select the spiral. You're going to select the plane that is normal. So meaning where you're going to have um, that is the the axis has to be perpendicular to that surface so I'm going to select the upper surface then I'm going to select that reference vector and notice that now we see the spiral we could change the um, information about the spiral whether you want it to be left hand 
meaning that it goes clockwise, or right hand counterclockwise, the number of turns that you would like to see. So let's kind of rotate this to the top view so that we could see the differences. So notice how many turns we have. We only have one. So if you want to make it a little bit longer, so we go two for two turns. So notice one turn, two turns. Then what is the pitch between the points that you're going to have? So you could have, uh, so let's see, we could have it 50. Or let's see, we could have uh, 60. So that reduces then the the pitch that you're going to go around. And how many, uh, what is the pitch along the spiral? So how many are we going to have? So let's see, we're going to have 20. So increases the, so it pitches the distance between the features. So this distance is reduced. And we hit OK. And then notice that now we have a spiral pattern. The next pattern that we're going to see is along a uh, path. For that we're going to open part 4. So the idea is that we're going to take this particular features with this is that extrusion with the blend and we're going to pattern along this side go all the way around so for that we're going to go into pattern we're going to select the feature to ensure that we select both the extrusion and the edge blend we're going to go to the part navigator so we click extrusion by holding the control key you select the edge blend so you select both of them we're going to go along path and then we're going to select the path and so we're going to select the path and we're going to move this again so we select this line this line and this line okay so notice that the way that it has it right now we have a count of two so we want to be able to have more than that so we're going to once again we could have a total span and count, or we could have a pitch and a span, or a count and a span. So we could let's see, go the total span that we uh, actually let's do count and pitch. So the count that we're gonna have, let's do 20, and let's decrease this the the pitch between them. So let's see 10. Then notice that this is the other one that we're going to have. So it is not going to work because the orientation that we have for the vector was in the opposite direction. So if you notice, this is how we have it over here. The, this feature is over here, so it cannot start at that point. So if we switch it, now we see it how it's represented over here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of the parts that we want instead of the ten, of instead of the 20 so we need to reduce significantly that number so that they all fit into the path notice that we don't have a warning sign anymore and then at this moment we could simply say okay and now we have a, a feature created along the path that we selected the next tool we're going to learn is how to mirror a feature to do that we're going to open part 5 and then the idea is that we're going to take this little part and we're going to mirror it to the other side using this plane in the middle to do that we're going to go to the uh, mirror component which is usually under more and notice over here we're going to do mirror feature not face but feature the feature that we have we select it over here as extrusion so notice that if we try to do it this way it might choose both so sometimes it's better to do it from the part navigator so I'm just gonna select this as extrusion the plane that I want to do it is about this point notice that it shows where the location of the new part is going to be and then we simply say OK notice we could try to do another mirror uh, we're gonna mirror the whole part about this uh, plane. So once again we go to more, mirror the feature. So in this case we're gonna mirror this and this second part. We're going to select the plane. So 
So either you could select the surface or you could select the actual plane and notice that it shows you the location of the new uh, feature and then you go into OK. So notice when I made this selection I didn't select this extrusion so you could simply go back and from the feature selections notice that uh, by clicking the control key and pressing the other feature notice that now it shows to 3 hit OK and now all the parts are successfully mirrored. The next tool we're going to learn is how to sweep along a guide. To do that we're going to open part number 6 from lecture 5. Notice that in this case we have two sketches. Both of these sketches have to be perpendicular to each other. And the goal of this feature is that we're going to take a cross section, in this case the rectangle, and is going to be swept along this second sketch. Once again, notice that the path sketch is done on the top plane and the cross-sectional sketch is done on the front plane. They have to be perpendicular to each other. So now to find the tool is going to go under surface, more, and sweep along the guide. The curve that we're going to use is going to be the rectangle and we're going to sweep it along the path. So notice how this basically this rectangle goes and moves and basically creates material along that guide. Another very useful technique is to use tubes. Tubes are useful when the cross-sectional area that you're going to have are going to be circles. So I'm going to suppress this feature and we're going to basically do the same process with using tubes. With tubes you just need the path since your cross section is going to be a circle and then you have to provide an outer and an inner diameter. We're going to have an outer diameter of one and let's see an inner diameter of a quarter. And notice that it creates the tube. If you want a solid tube, basically the inner diameter is going to be equal to zero. The next tool we're going to learn is how to create threads. In order to do so, we're going to open part 7. Notice we have an screw and we're going to add the thread. To do so, we're going to go in under more and the thread feature is in here. We're going to select detail and notice that it's asking us as in the left corner of an X left bottom corner is to select the cylindrical face. So we select it and notice by default it gives you a position where the thread is going to start. If that is not the position you want for the beginning of the thread, simply click to start and select the point that you are required. The way that index works, it takes the measurement of the cylinder and then approximates the values closest to a particular standard to that given diameter. If the values that are given by an X do not correspond to your particular thread, simply modify the values by changing them over here. Once you are satisfied with the values, simply click OK. Notice that an X um, uses a lot of memory when handling threads, especially if you decide to do a thread that has a very small pitch, the memory of an X will be, motiv uh, will be affected and therefore it might make the model a little bit slower. Notice that by default it gives you also a total length of the, of the thread for the given cylinder. If you only wanted a section you could do that by simply changing the thread, going to the di dialog box and instead of having the whole length you could do a part of it, let's see half, and then we hit OK and notice that only a section of the cylinder becomes a thread. The last tool we're going to use in this lecture is going to be Shell. To show you how it works, we're going to open part 8 from lecture 5. To access the Shell feature, we're going to go up here, and then I'm going to show you the choices. 
The two choices that we have for shell are to remove faces and then shell it, or to shell with all the faces intact. So let's just start with remove faces and then shell. It means that you are going to select a face and notice that the remaining faces are going to remain intact while you create a distance of the thickness that you provided in here. Notice that you could change the direction of the thickness, whether it's going inwards or outwards, depending of what your application is. If you want to, in this case, I remove the front part of the piece. If I also want to remove the back part, you do it like this. And then I, if I want to remove, let's see, the bottom part, this is what I will end it up with. So now let me show you the other type of shell. I'm going to suppress this. I'm going to go to shell. And then we're going to go with all the faces. So I'm going to select the object and the thickness and OK. And you will say that there is not much change. Notice that it looks exactly the same. But if we go now to the static uh, wireframe, we will see that the actually the inside of the object was completely removed while the outside remained intact. So you will choose the appropriate uh, shell feature dependent on your design.